Today we are diving into Apache Kafka, one of the most powerful distributed streaming platforms that's revolutionizing how companies handle data streams. By the end of this video, you'll understand Kafka's core architecture, why it's so blazingly fast, and the key use cases where Kafka really shines. First, let's talk about the core architecture. At its heart, Kafka has three main components. Producers. These are the applications that push data to Kafka. Think of them as writers sending messages into the system. They can be anything from your backend services to IoT devices to application logs. Then comes the brokers. These are the backbone of any Kafka cluster. These are the actual servers that store the data published by the producer. In a typical Kafka cluster, you'll have multiple brokers working together for redundancy and scalability. Each broker manages certain partitions of your data. Each Kafka partition is physically implemented as a series of segment files on disk. When messages are written to a partition, they are actually being appended to a current active segment file for that partition. By default, once a segment file reaches 1 GB in size, Kafka closes it and creates a new active segment. This segmentation strategy has several important benefits. First, it allows for efficient deletion of old data instead of removing individual messages. Kafka can simply delete entire segment files when they are no longer needed. It improves the file system performance by preventing individual files from becoming too large. It also enables faster recovery if a broker fails, as it only needs to check the integrity of the most recent segment. Coming to consumers. Consumers are the applications that subscribe to data from Kafka topics. They pull messages from brokers and process them in some way, maybe storing them in a database, triggering alerts, or feeding them into some analytics system. These three together combine to form a complete Kafka system. Now let's talk about what makes Kafka fast. When people say Kafka is fast, we need to clarify what that actually means. There are two key performance metrics. First is latency. Latency is how quickly a single message gets from a producer finally to a consumer and is processed completely. Think of this as a delay or response time. Second is throughput. This is how many messages the system can handle per second. This is about volume. Kafka optimizes heavily for throughput, sometimes even at the expense of latency. It is designed to handle massive volumes of data efficiently even if individual messages might not be processed instantly. For many use cases, especially for big data applications, this throughput oriented design is exactly what's needed. The first thing which makes Kafka so fast is the way the log records are stored. As we discussed above also, Kafka uses a log segment approach where the data is stored in segment files, which is of default size 1 GB. This helps Kafka to be blazingly fast. But there are two more optimizations which Kafka does or are the secret sauce what makes Kafka so fast and makes it handle such big throughput. The first is sequential I.O. One of the Kafka's most brilliant design decisions is how it handles disk I.O. Instead of random access patterns that jump around a disk, Kafka uses sequential I.O. Appending new messages to the end of a file and reading them in order. This is absolutely crucial for performance. Most people think SSDs are always faster than hard disks. And for random access, that is true. But check this out. With sequential access patterns, even traditional hard drives can achieve impressive throughput, sometimes hundreds of megabytes per second. Kafka takes advantage of this by appending messages to the end of log files and also reading the messages in a sequence. It also uses operating systems page cache aggressively. This design choice means Kafka can handle massive throughput even on a relatively modest hardware. You can even deploy a Kafka cluster on your own personal laptop. Coming to the second optimizations, this is zero copy optimization. Now, what do we mean by zero copy? Now, in traditional data transfer, when a message goes from disk to a network socket, it goes through these four steps. First, the OS reads data from disk into the kernel buffer. Then the data is copied from the kernel space to application memory. The application then copies it back to the kernel space, which is the network buffer. And finally, it is sent over the network. That's four copies for a single transfer. This weighs CPU cycles and memory bandwidth. With zero copy optimization, Kafka uses specialized system calls that allow data to move directly from disk to network without all those extra copies. The result, much less CPU usage, lower memory overhead, and significantly higher throughput, especially for larger messages. Kafka uses the send file system call to make this zero copy data transfer. 
So now how the flow looks like. The data is read from disk into the kernel buffer and this is the only copy which happens. The kernel then directly transfers data to the network buffer using direct memory access or also called DMA. There's no data passing between the user space, eliminating the copies 2 and 3. You'll be stunned to see how much improvement this zero copy does in terms of CPU usage, throughput and memory bandwidth consumption. Now let's talk about what are the Kafka use cases. Now, as you might have understood by now that Kafka is essentially used for high throughput applications and also big data applications. So these can be anything like log aggregation, stream processing of data, event sourcing, metrics collection, some activity tracking. The main thing which you have to keep in mind that is that Kafka excels whatever you need to reliably move large volumes of data between systems, especially when the order of messages matter. So there you have it, Kafka's core architecture with producers, brokers and consumers. It's focused on throughput over latency and brilliant design choices like sequential I.O. and zero copy optimization that makes it so efficient. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and comment for more topics which you want to see the videos on and I'll see you in the next one.